Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I have another top 5 video for you guys on San Andreas. And on this video, what we're going to be focusing on is we're going to be focusing on top 5 features that a lot of players don't know about. Now these are features in the game, some the game barely tells you about them, doesn't do a really good job of explaining, and some the game doesn't even tell you at all that these are in the game. These are features that I know that a lot of players have noticed they don't seem to know about them, and some can actually be pretty surprising. So I hope that you guys enjoy this top 5 features that many players don't know about. So starting off at number 5, we have fast travel by airport. Now a lot of people in this game, when they want to get across the map really quickly, they'll either use the flying car cheat code or they'll just drive into the airport and they'll steal a jet and just fly across the map. But there's actually an even faster way to get across the map. At the three main airports of the game, when you go to Los Santos airport, you go to San Fierro airport or Las Venturas airport, you can go up to the terminal, it's right, you know, main building, you'll see a little yellow marker, you go in there, and then just choose what city you want to fly to. Now, obviously, you can't fly to the city you're at, but in this case, I'm at Los Santos, and I'm choosing to fly to San Fierro. It costs $500, very easy money in the game, not a lot of money, and when you get in the plane, you'll have this cinematic where the plane will be going to that destination of yours. You can fast travel with just X, it'll just instantly skip it, and the plane will land, making this the fastest way to get across the map without the flying car cheat code, in my opinion. You can also jump out in midair, but I personally just don't find it that helpful, but this is really useful for getting across the map, getting to another city when you don't feel like driving there, you don't feel like flying there, just go to the airport, go to the main building in Los Santos Airport, San Fierro Airport, or Las Venturas Airport, and you can just fast travel to that city pretty quickly. Next at number 4, we have three different fighting styles. Now, San Andreas does have three different unique fighting styles. You have the basic fighting style, which is circle on the PlayStation, so I guess maybe technically four, but you can also add on an extra fighting style with the triangle buttons. Um, now, I'm assuming this would be Y on the Xbox. Not sure what key this would be on the PC. Now, to get these different fighting styles, you would need to go to the three gyms in the game. Now, each gym does give you a different fighting style, and what you have to do is you have to have a certain muscle mass. I believe that it's over over 30% and when you get that you talk to the trainer now the one in Los Santos the trainer there will teach you basically a boxing fighting style to unlock it all you basically got to do is just beat him in a fight just keep standing circle that's just what I did I just kept punching him not giving him a reaction not letting him get get a chance to hit me back but anyways he just basically teaches you it now there's a few other few moves you can learn um, one move in which you just run right at the target and you just press triangle. That's a quick punch right to the face. Another one where you can do a triangle combination. And then the last one is when you can actually hit them right when they're on the ground. Now the other gym is in San Fierro. And these are all marked by the weights. So you have the weight symbol for the gym. You know, they're very easy to find. There's only three gyms in the game. But... At the um, San Fierro one, the guy here, I believe he teaches you a form of Kung Fu. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong on that. But this one is the easiest one to learn because all you basically got to do is just push him out of the ring. When you push him out of the box area here, you automatically win the fight versus in Las Venturas and Los Santos where you have to knock the fighter out. But basically the same idea. He'll teach you a move or just run up to the target. You just press triangle. Then he'll teach you a combo. You see that combo that I'm doing right here and one where you just hit the target when they're on the ground. Now, the final one in Las Venturas, it's also a boxing ring, but it'll also give you a different fighting style. Now, this one is, you know, called Below the Belt Gym, so it's kind of more of a cheap fighting style here, but it's, I guess, technically, it's a form of boxing fighting, but this one, basically same idea, just knock out the trainer right here, and they'll teach you the, the three moves. And to switch the fighting style whenever you want to switch them, all you basically got to do is just go back to each gym and just fight that specific opponent and just beat them. And that's it. And you'll have that fighting style um, unlocked. You'll have that fighting style equipped, I should say. At number three, we have the Casino Debt Hitmen. Now, this feature is a feature that the game definitely doesn't tell you about. And some people consider this annoying, but I actually consider it very unique. Now, to basically do this, what you have to do is you have to go to one of the casinos in Las Venturas. I think Caligula's works the best, personally. But anyways, you would have to just start out playing at the casino, and now regardless of how much money you have, you have to get your gambling skill up if you want to start playing with a lot of money. And it doesn't matter if you win or lose, you just gotta keep betting and betting hundreds of dollars. Eventually, you're gonna be able to play with thousands of dollars, then you're gonna be able to play with tens of thousands, and eventually you get to hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now... When you make big bets, you can actually borrow money from the casino, even if you don't have that money. And what happens is, if you actually lose, you go into debt. If you make a major loss, you can really go into debt. And if you go 
a million dollars into debt, the casino will actually not let you play anymore. And it'll actually say, you know, minus whatever that number is. So you guys see, I'm, I'm a big in debt right here. The money on the top of my screen is red. And all the money that I make now is going to go straight to the casino. So basically, it's going to try to even out. So every money that I make from there, there on is going to go to the casino. But that's not over yet. When you actually leave the casino, when you're actually in debt, you'll actually get this specific phone call right here. Hey, Mr. Johnson, just a friendly reminder that you owe me money. Don't be a stranger. And now what happens is, if you don't pay off the debt quickly, and you wait a few days, if you're in Las Venturas, you will get this phone call. I believe that you can't get this phone call if you're in another city, because he said you're back in town, so I just stayed in Las Venturas, and I got this phone call right here. Wow, I love those muscles! Mr. Johnson, I hear you're in the neighborhood. Some of my associates will be paying you a visit to talk about your debts. So you heard that right there. The guy says my associates will be paying you a visit to talk about your debt. Now, this can happen a few minutes later. I stood around, nothing happened for a few minutes, and then eventually I started getting shot at. And you will actually have these hitmen that will actually go after you. Now, they will oftentimes be in a four-door sedan, and they'll get out and they'll shoot at you with submachine guns and assault rifles, so these hitmen are pretty armed. So if you go into debt, the hitmen will constantly keep coming after you until you pay off that debt. Now, if you go to another city, you should be safe. They shouldn't be able to spawn because I spent a lot of days in Los Santos. I didn't have any of these guys spawn, but the moment that I came back into Las Venturas, the hitmen started spawning. The, f the good thing about this is that whenever you kill the hitmen, the hitmen do have a lot of money on them. They have thousands of dollars on them. So eventually, if you keep killing them, if you are in debt, you can pay it off just by killing the hitmen, but that is going to take some time. I recommend, though, just to save your game before you play at the casino, just so you can try again, just so this doesn't happen to you. Because when I was a kid, you know, I was messing around, I started betting a lot of money at the casino, millions of dollars, and then I got into debt, and I didn't know this was going to happen, and the hitmen just started spawning after me, and it actually freaked me out, especially how scary it is when you're just sitting in your car, and they just randomly carjack you and just attack you. It just came out of nowhere. I didn't expect this to ever happen. Moving on to number two, we have the burglary side activity. Now this one is easily missable for two major reasons. And the first reason is, is that burglary missions, they don't appear on your radar. There is nothing on your radar that actually tells you that you can actually go to this van right here and start up the burglary missions. And secondly, burglary missions actually do not count towards 100% game completion. It's actually a shame that the game doesn't even give you a notification that it's actually here on the map. But this is actually unlocked right after the home invasion mission early on with Ryder. And there's actually burglary vans in each of the cities. But let me start out with Los Santos right here. So Los Santos, um, the burglary van is actually not too far from Grove Street. It's in this area. It's in between these apartment buildings. Get into the burglary van between um, uh, 20 o'clock to 6 o'clock. And those are the times that you can actually break into houses. And what you basically do is drive the burglary van around and you try to find houses or apartments that have the yellow um, indicator that you can actually go inside them and then when you go inside them you're sneaking around the house and you're um, looking for stuff you're looking for different stuff to pick up like TVs radios microwaves anything that you can possibly sell now you got to be careful to, not to wake the homeowner up if you wake the homeowner up you have 10 seconds to get out of the house if you get out of the house within those 10 seconds then you don't have police that come after you and you can try again you can walk right back in the house and they will be asleep but the thing about this is and this is what's crazy and this is the amount of detail that they put into San Andreas not every NPC is going to be sleeping at the same time. So you would think that in an old game like this, all the NPCs will be sleeping at the same time. Some NPCs will actually be awake. They'll actually just be sitting in their living room. Um, I think that the worst place to break into homes is in East Los Santos, because in that place, you can break into a house, it's a Grove Street house or a Ballas house, and they'll actually all be awake and they'll shoot at you. So I personally don't think that it's a good place to break into houses. But that's Los Santos. There's other places in Los Santos that you can break in. You can actually go across the city and break into some of the homes alongside the beach. But but now let's move on to San Fierro because these burglary vans are in the three major cities. So there's one in San Fierro. The one in San Fierro is actually right behind this building. 
It's in Doherty. It's the same neighborhood where your garage is. I'll show you guys right here on the map. So you get in at the exact same time between 20 o'clock and 6 o'clock, and you basically drive around San Fierro, and you just break into homes, and that's that for San Fierro. Now, the other one is Las Venturas. Las Venturas is probably my favorite um, burglary city, um, and the reason that I like Las Venturas a lot, by the way, the van is going to be on the right side of Las Venturas. It's going to be near the highway. So near the highway right here that I've marked, you just get into it. Um, it's near this building with this big garage. I like to drive all the way up north. So I like to drive north of San Las Venturas. There is this area where the suburbs are. The reason Las Venturas is my favorite city for this activity is because there's a lot of big houses here. Houses that specifically have two floors, a lot of different rooms to loot. But there's also a trick that I learned in this. Now when you're breaking into the different homes, what you could do is you could kill the homeowner and you could walk out of the house within 10 seconds and then come back in. But this doesn't always work because sometimes the home homeowner will respawn. Other times the homeowner will be dead and you can run around the house. But the better trick that I know is what you do is when you find something that you like that you want to pick up in the house pick that up and just quickly run for the door run for the door before um before the 10 seconds are and you can just get outside put it in the van and then what you do you just run right back in the house and you do the exact same thing you just pick that sneak up to that item before the timer starts pick up the item and then run out of the house and you can just keep doing this back and forth the homeowner will be back to sleep the moment that you go back in the house so it's a quick way to loot the houses now burglary missions they don't give you a lot of money as you guys see i stole a lot of stuff and i only made a few thousand dollars but it's my personal favorite activity in the game because it's just so unique the fact that you can break into homes you just sneak around you try to find stuff i just love this activity so much i also like you know breaking into homes in red dead um redemption 2 when they added that feature in but i just like this activity a lot again it doesn't count towards 100 percent and the vans are not marked which that's you know it should be marked at least but that's it a lot of people don't know about this activity and number one, the number one feature that a lot of players don't know about is playing two-player. Yes, that's right. San Andreas offers you the chance to play with another player, whether that player is at your house right next to you or even online if it's one of your friends. But I believe you could only do this on the PlayStation. And I'll explain. Now, basically, you would need to find one of these, you know, red markers that's right here. There is five of these across the map, which I'll actually show the locations, but when I was a kid, I actually found one of these markers, like, a long time ago, and I actually said to myself, what is this? And I just ran into this, and it says, pl player two, press a button to connect, and I connected another controller, and I hit the button, I was like, wow, you can play this game with somebody else. And when you play this game two-player with somebody, basically what happens is the screen is kind of like, um, ceiling view. I don't know what that's called, but you kind of see it from more of like, above you, basically. And I think the reason is because if they had direct split screen, then they would need to, you know, put a lot of power into this game, and since this is, you know, a 2004 game, probably why it doesn't have direct split screen. But, uh, you run around like this, you can change to CJ, so if you just want to just go to CJ's view, but then the other person is going to be able to see. You need to be at a certain distance with the other player, so you need to be next to the other player at all times. If you get too far, then what will happen is it'll just disconnect, and you'll just go right back to the marker. When another player gets into a car with you, it has a traditional car view and the other player can actually shoot out the window, which is really cool. But here's a crazy thing. You can actually play this online. Now on the PlayStation, I know this works 100% because I've tested it. Now I don't know how this, if this works on Xbox. If Xbox is a similar feature, let me know down below. But um, basically what you do, and you can see right here, I'm playing on the PS5, so I know it works on the PS5. It has to work on the PS4 because PS4 also has share play. But basically, get into a party with your friend, and then what you do is you activate share play. Go to the feature in which, you know, your friend can also play as a second um, person. So your friend can also play the game with you. And what will happen is go up to the marker, and then all your friend basically has to do once they connect to the share play is just hit the button. That's it. And then your friend can actually play. And depending on how good of an internet connection your friend has and you have, this will determine, you know, how laggy this can be. My friend, you know, he said that it was fine running for him. There was no issue. So we both had a good internet connection and we ran through this no problem. But a lot of fun. You can mess around. You can go across the map. And the craziest thing about the two players is that actually you can use cheats. So you can get wanted levels. You can use cheats. You can see I'm using a flying car right here. A lot of fun. You can go across the map, go into military bases. There's just so many crazy things that you can do when you're um, 
when you're playing two-player. You can go anywhere on the map you want as long as you stay close to each other. There aren't really any missions that you can do. You're locked out of stores. Um, uh, there isn't really anything to do other than explore and just kill cops, but it's still a lot of fun. Now, there are rampages that are across the map, but the rampages, they're kind of boring. Like, one rampage is, you know, in Los Santos here, and you basically just kill 15 pedestrians, and that's it. It's over. Another one where you're in a helicopter and you just blow up a few cars, those are just boring. The best ones are the ones where you can just free roam with players. So let me show you guys where they are in the map. The easiest one to access is the one that's right here in Idlewood. Now it's in between kind of these apartment buildings right here, just run right here, right at the start of the game, you can do this. And also the player, the player that connects, they share whatever weapons you have. So they basically get a copy of whatever weapons you are carrying. If you spawn a cheat code that gives you certain weapons, that other player will get it also. The unfortunate thing is, if you use a health cheat code, the other player isn't going to get health, only the player one CJ is, which kind of sucks. Now, another location that we have is we have one in San Fierro. Now, the one in San Fierro, it's right next to the construction site on the left side of it. It's in this parking lot right here. Another one that we have is we have one in um, in Red County, and this is in the town of Dillimore. Um, so right here, right here on the street in front of this garage. Another location that we have is we have one in Las Venturas. Now, the one in Las Venturas is south of Caligula's um, Casino. You can see right here, it's in between these buildings, right underneath it. You go and activate that. And the last one we have, we have one in the desert. Um, this is in um, El K. Brados, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. But you just basically go up to here, press the button, and you can play for friend. You can mess around, go across the map. On share play, this is a lot of fun, playing with your buddy. This is just this is just so much fun. One of the funnest things that you can do, that you can play one of the best games ever of all time. One of the best games of all time, GTA San Andreas, and you can play with a buddy right there on the couch or somebody with you on share play. But that's just number one for me. I just had so much fun with the two player. There are unfortunately a lot of vehicles that a second player can't get into, but there are a decent amount of vehicles that you can both get into together and just do a lot of crazy things. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like. And if you're new to my channel, you might subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.